Well, shalom, shalom. This is Barbara, and I'm so glad to welcome everyone today. Actually, this is a new moon day for us. We're having a new moon day conference call, and I'm serving as your host today. And uh, Brother uh, Stephen Retz is also here today, and he has a presentation for us. Uh, Brother Stephen, would you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit and then go right ahead with your presentation? Sure. Uh, well, I'm Stephen Retz, as she stated. I uh, am a believer. Um, I actually go by Nazarene, uh, Nazarene Mormon to be specific, but anyways. Uh, I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is the headquarters for the LDS slash Mormon slash Brighamite church. Uh, I'm no longer a member. Um, in, in around 2014, I uh, started learning a lot of truths that I didn't know um, beforehand, including Torah and including the Lunar Sabbath, um, which includes New Moon, uh, which is a, a thing that we're talking about today. Um, and basically Yahweh's calendar and Yahweh's calendar is not the Gregorian calendar um, I mean go off a lot on this but I, I mean Yahweh's calendar has three types of days right work days weekly Sabbaths and new moon days um, and the Gregorian calendar ha only has two types historically um, the Gregorian calendar which is based off the Roman calendar actually did used to uh, have um, new new days, I believe, and they also had uh, leap months, like the Hebrew calendar, where now they do um, leap days. But there's been a lot of calendar changes. Uh, later, I can give you a link, but I have um, a lot of resources here um, that goes into calendar history, which I knew nothing about um, because. I just go to church where my church does, right? Why would I think anything different? But um, because of hard work of World's Last Chance and Troy Miller, um, I've been converted to the Lunar Sabbath. Um, and I'm just trying to give a little bit back. Uh, I disagree with them on various tidbits here and there. But I am very grateful for their hard work in uh, helping me see the truth of the Lunar Sabbath. Um, so, I guess to start off with, um, 2014, I also started, someone talked about the Lunar Sabbath um, to, at a presentation I went at, and they, they would say that Saturday was okay, I mean, Sunday was okay, Saturday was better, and Lunar Sabbath was best, which uh, I don't agree with that statement even now, um, but... That got me to look into it, and I first looked into it to prove them wrong, because that's just weird, right? But as I actually started looking at the details, and not just surface things that people use to dismiss it away, but actually look into the details, and I was convicted. The Lunar Sabbath uh, is true. Um, I, I, I don't remember how long it took. It, it's been a process, and I, I keep learning more details more and more later. No, hold one second. Sorry. No, no, Gerald. No, no, go to my house. Sorry, my three-year-old wanted to come and say hi. Um, I, I love my kids, but sometimes they don't <laughs> respect conferences. Um, anyways, so, um, but this last year, not this year, but last year, I started looking into details a lot more. And the reason being is some people did a 13th month and some people did not. Um, meaning some started the year earlier and some started the year later. I was one that started later. Um, and I didn't have a real good reason why other than I do not believe that we can predict when a sign will happen to do calculations of it to start something too early. Um, Yahshua said to watch for the signs, not predict the signs. Um, but because how the Orthodox Jews slash Pharisees Jews were doing it early, that's where 
the majority of people um, started doing it. And so I really started looking into various details on the calendar. And, and one, possibly to start with, is when the day starts. Now, before this happened, I um, did believe in the morning. But when in the morning is somewhat vague in the scriptures. And we, I have a list that we can look at. Um, but first, one thing I'd like to do is to look at some videos. Um, but... Oh, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask. Um, Barbara told me she'll be watching the chat. I, I think it's more important to help people with questions than this to spout out information. Um, plus, it helps me know what to talk about. <laughs> so, if anything, it helps me too. Um, but back on the when the day starts. Um, uh, before I get show a video, one thing I do want to say: um, there's two types of knowledges. There's book knowledge and street knowledge, meaning, you know, you go out and, and use it and you have experience with it. Um, and on, on the part of the year starting later, there's a Torah channel that I, I like quite a bit. It's called New to Torah. And he, he gives little um, thoughts here and there. He doesn't get real deep in the videos, but he gives good nuggets of truth that can show that he's really thought through these things. And one that he did um, last year talked about how he became a homesteader and he grows farms. He has, uh, he grows plants and he farms animals. And so, and he partly did that to better understand the scriptures. And some of the things that he brought out is how in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, it brings out when these different harvests are supposed to happen, what seasons that they happen. And if you start the year too early, those harvests, the plants that are to harvest aren't ready uh, in, their, in their moon if you start it too early. Uh, and I can show those verses if you want uh, and later. But um, one thing I'd first like to do is in parting to help me find out when the morning actually starts, I, I went to YouTube and went and watched um, videos of people recording dawn, um, dusk, sunrise, and sunset to, to help me kind of understand and see if my eye can distinguish between dawn, before dawn, and after dawn. And in my experience, I can't. And I've not seen anybody talk about how the ancients could distinguish between dawn. Um, but sunrise and sunset are very easy to distinguish. So one thing to start off, let's. I, I want to show a little video that I recorded. Uh, I'm actually probably going to show at least two. Um, but this is me recording with my GoPro, okay? Um, and then I, I did some things, I added uh, subtitles. So, um, here's a, a very popular program from World's Last Chance, which I, I did use to use. So what I want to do, we'll go on that date, because it's a Carlos Paz, Carlos Paz. Uh, and this is going to be the morning of the 7th. So we're going to go see when dawn is. They say dawn is at 4.45. And so this is, was part of my experience where you need street knowledge to understand book knowledge. Because if all you have is book knowledge, when you read something, you really don't really comprehend what's being stated. Um, so I'll just go a little bit before. So here's a little bit before dawn. Okay, so that's when they say dawn starts, which is when they start their day. Now, when I look at that, the couple minutes before, I, I could tell no difference between that and a couple minutes after. I honestly do not know how to distinguish dawn from the time before and the time after. Now, um, 
if you guys know how, I, I would love to learn. And I've dug deep into these details because I, I'm working on writing a program for the Lunar Sabbath calendar. Um, and when you write code, you can't just go off of generalities. You need specifics. And so I, I've dug into some specifics. So um, let's get closer to sunrise. So the time that you uh, start seeing light actually coming across the horizon is uh, civil dawn. So um, there's three dawns. There's astronomical dawn. There's nautical dawn, which is used for um, um, uh, for boating. <laughs> I'm forgetting the right word, but um, going boat. Uh, um, stuff with the ocean and the water. I, I don't understand why it's different. And then there's civil dawn. Uh, and one thing uh, you ought to do, <laughs> at least once, is stay up all night and, and through the morning and, and see the differences between these times and how they make a difference. Um, so they, they don't have the times here. We can look it up on my app if you want because I give the different times. But with this light coming, um, it's going to be around civil dawn would be my educated guess, okay? Um, but as you can see, here it's 5.30, and here they're saying dawn is at 4.45, so this is 45 minutes later. See, now it's uh, 5.43, and we're starting to see the little platform that I have my GoPro on, which happens to just be on top of a little chimney thing. Um, when I did this one, I pointed my GoPro the wrong direction. I was hoping to record the sunrise, which we'll do another recording later that shows that. But um, this is around 6 o'clock right now, which is where we're really actually going to be able to go start do things. Um, uh, let's go, let's skip ahead. This one's probably... Uh, but there, oh, I guess we do get the sunrise. I guess I got a little mixed up on what recording. So, one thing I find interesting, you see the little halo? <laughs> I um it just seems to happen just before the sunrise. Um anyways. So now here here's this direct sunlight, okay? And this direct sunlight is way brighter than dispersed light, which is what you get you get dispersed light all through the night. In fact, part of the reason why we have um red moons uh, occasionally is because of the dispersed light and the bending of the light going through the atmosphere of the earth. That's what causes it to be red and you know um, a prism with uh, when you put a light through a prism you start getting the rainbow and red's one of those colors and that gets onto the moon but anyways. Um, so let's look at one other video that's probably better for shadows. Um, it's this one. Skip the day. So 12, so that's going to be the morning of the 13th. So here they're saying dawn is at 445, which is when they're saying the day starts. So I'll start there. Uh, to me, it looks pretty dark. I, I I wouldn't be doing anything really normally during that time of the day. Um, so I don't want to beat that bush too much. Um, so this time, I, I'm learning as I'm going here. You see, you'll see something. I, I did a little quote, quote, sundial, which is basically just a stick to see the shadow. Um, and during this time of dispensed light, you cannot see a shadow. And these shadows are important because anciently, shadows is what they used to determine the hour of the day. 
um, and also how to determine uh, the start of the year. Um, and in a little bit, we'll look at some scriptures that kind of get into this a little bit. Uh, it's boring watching this. This is why this is a recording. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go back a little bit. Okay, so it's 8.07 in the morning. Now, you're starting to see it come up. Uh, you see that? As the sun came up, you can see the shadow. It is dis a discernible shadow and it's moving, which is what sundials use to track the hours, and it is what the Israelites have used to keep track of the day, uh, as shown in the Tanakh and the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, which we can get into. So, anyways, uh, I have some other videos that I've actually recorded myself I could show or we probably might be better even to go start looking into the scriptures some, unless anybody has any uh, questions right now. Let's see. No, okay. So, let's go look at the scriptures. So, a, a lot of people will like to say that the day starts at dawn. But there's not many people that will actually share a lot of scriptures. So I saw a video in a series that, in general, I actually do like this series. Um, but, in fact, I give them credit because they're giving uh, references for people to look at for what they believe. Um, and uh, I have four of his five videos in my Lunar Sabbath uh, YouTube playlist. Um, so, but anyways... But here are some scriptures that he claims uh, teaches dawn. Um, we have to be careful with translations, though, because um, translations uh, have the theories and beliefs of the translators. The thing about words, words can be thought of pictures and paintbrushes. And a problem is, when you translate one language language to a different language, um, there's not always the exact same colors when you translate it, for using that analogy. So you have to use something close. And if you're not sure uh, exactly what to use, you'll pick something that you think is reasonable and goes along more with uh, what you actually believe it is. And, and that's not necessarily evil. And they're just probably doing what they think is actually correct. But, so, one verse that they, this video used to uh, prove dawn is Genesis 3.24. Uh, and the big part of the reason is because until the breaking of the day. So, different translations um, translate this differently. So Jacob was left all alone, and there was a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Yes, they, they do. And we have to be careful. Um, I, yeah, it, it's a mixed bag whether that's good or not, right? Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. We just have to um, be a Berean and do our own research. So one reason I like about, one thing I like about Bible Hub is it has the interlinear um, and so we can go click on that. So, um, a key word for this is breaking, which in some places they actually do translate it as dawn. Um, and we can go click on the Strong's Concordance. And this is Allah. Uh, it basically means to, to go up, to ascend, to climb. Uh, and you can see all the different ways that it's translated um, in the King James Version. Oh, wait. Or is this under Nas? Uh, so there, there's a, one thing I like about the Bible Hub is they have a whole bunch of concordances, not just the Strong's. They also have the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And I, I like to try to get context from all of them. So here's the Strong's Exhaustive. 
um, where most people just go off the strongs. The NAS is a very good one. Anyways, we should look as much as we can. Yes, the interlinear is very helpful because um, it helps us actually go look at the Hebrew words and we can go click on it. And in fact, I, I've done a few of my own translations of a few key verses doing this and trying to use my understanding of the theology that they're trying to push out. Correct or not, that's something that everybody needs to judge themselves. But unless you go actually go doing a technique like this, you're just trusting uh, the translator. Um, but uh, it's interesting that it means to go up, approach, arise, ascending, to break. Uh, and as we looked at those videos, the time to me that looks like breaking was not dawn. It was the sun breaking forth to be seen. Um, and I don't know how much you paid attention, but uh, this, the World's Last Chance calendar actually put the sunrise uh, a bit later, because I think we saw about 8.30. Now, um, my app still doesn't show it at 8.30. There is a, a problem because there's a hill right there. So when there's a mountain or a hill on the horizon for you, the sun has to rise more so that way you can see it over that. So that would explain some of the errors in the calculations because these calculations work with uh, lakes and big bodies of water because they're flat and they're on the actual horizon. That's why I did a sunrise on the water because this, the math that pretty much everybody uses for this part um, is pretty accurate in areas like that. They're, the service date and time is previewing a service where you can get the sunrise and sunset accurately, taking account of the mountains and the sunrises, but it's not free. Um, and so the app I'm doing, I'm just doing the free calculations um, that are standard on that. And I, I don't understand why World's Last Chance is two hours off on that one. I'm Because most of the time they're pretty close to even when I'm giving. But everybody has slight little leeway. But anyways, back to this. Um, it's the sun breaking forth. This is what, how I would read this uh, Genesis verse, looking at the interlinear and actually going out and getting the street knowledge and going and watching. Also, here, here's just another little street knowledge thing. I find it interesting. Uh, it's around civil dawn that uh, animals and birds actually start getting up and doing things, the ones that aren't not nocturnal. It's generally about the time when bar birds start singing because um, they're starting to be light, but it's not direct light. It's dispersed light. As you saw on the video, we need that direct light to cause a shadow, and the shadow is what we're used to determine things, like with the sundial, with ARAS. I, I, hold on. So the Karam sundial is the one from um, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, Ayaz, that's the one I want. Is the one from the Tanakh and uh, Isaiah talks about, and a few other places. Anyways, oops, I didn't want to do that. Um, let's go back to my notes. So, does anybody have any questions on that verse? Um, I'm happy to try to talk about anything using the interlinear if that did not make sense of why I believe the, how some put morning in that tri translation and I hopefully looking at the interlinear and the coordinates and actually seeing it in real life would help if even if you don't agree with me can help you understand why I believe it's a sunrise and this actually doesn't even say a dawn depending on what you want to put for, translate some of these words. No, okay, I'm not saying anything, so I guess I'll just go on to another one. Um, we'll skip Judges 19, unless we get more time. That one's just kind of a sensitive one. Um, so Job 3.9 is an interesting one. Let's go get that up. 
Oops. If I can... <laughs> I don't have their order memorized. <laughs> So let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day. Now, you can see the stars until the disperse. And see, so this is my little nod. Dawning is in the morning, but people use to say, well, this is, it's talking about the dawn because that's when the day starts. I, I would tend to disagree, and I, I believe we can look at context to see that. Um, and even just going out and getting that street knowledge. Um, these writers of the scriptures, they didn't just have book knowledge, they had street knowledge because they were out doing it. Where today we have tons of conveniences where it's easy to live life disconnected from nature. Back then, that was not the case. And so they knew these things because they lived it day by day. Where today, we don't because we have modern technology that hides this things from us because we rely on that instead of nature. In fact, even um, on my calendar changes page, it's even interesting the history of clocks. Uh, why is it not scrolling? Anyways, for some reason my computer's gone funny, so we won't worry about that. Anyway, so we'll go back to this Job. The twilight has to do with the nighttime, which would go along with dark. Let it look for light, which I believe is talking about the stars, because the stars and the moon are what shine at night. Um, and the big thing that makes me go along with the stars on this one is you can see the moon during the day. When the sun is at high noon, you can see the moon. And so I don't believe it can be talking about the sun hiding here. In fact, it even talks about the stars at the very beginning. But when there is light, that's when you cannot see the stars. And I believe this is talking about the Maseroth. And if I, the Maseroth teaches the gospel, but that's a whole other subject. Um, so another one people use from Job. Um, to suggest dawn is Job 7.4. When I lie down, oh, let me get it over here, so that way, oh, come on. Okay, I'm going to close this window because it's acting funny, and I'm going to open it again. I have too much open. You can see I have a lot of windows open. I'm always researching. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Uh, you, can, you can see tons of translations here. Um, it's a great tool. Uh, I'm just going to read one off my notes. When I lie down, I say, when I, shall I arise and the night be gone? Am I full of tossings to and fro? Sounds like, I don't know about you, but I toss and turn a lot when I'm sleeping unto the dawning. Now this is a real interesting one and I think this is where they've tried to make it make sense. Because um, the w word behind that actually is not speaking of the morning which is dawn. Dawn's in the morning. It's talking about dusk and dusk is in the evening. Um, which normally reading this we think it would be talking about sleeping because tossing and turning. But, I, I don't know, because you look at the Hebrew word under that, um, des desip, it actually means dusk, evening, night. Um, even the Greek one on that. Um, so, I, I'm not sure what to think other than the translator was just trying to make it make sense unto him. Um, so, let's see here, if I can find it. 
tossing turning for so this one actually it shows night instead of the dawn uh, shall I rise lie down yeah oh, dawn here's twilight so here's that dawn that they're even here with the interlinear but when you go look at the Strong's coordinates and other Hebrew concordances it's twilight which is night um, in fact uh, twilight for Strong's Naz ex exhaustive is dawn twice which doesn't make sense to me but most of them are dusk evening twilight and so 10 out of the 12 occurrences has to do with night and two times in the morning I, I don't know do what you want with that I I would take it for morning though um, I mean at, at dawn um, because most of these are evening translations um, we would have to go look at each individual one but that's neither here or there for right now um, so here's my next one is songs of Solomon now I personally do not believe Songs of Solomon is scripture, but I do believe it is historical and wise to learn from it. Um, and some people, oh, did I, is that Songs of Solomon? Sorry, my mouse is acting funny on me. I, I, I'm not... It's always when you're doing a presentation, right? <laughs> I'm going to close it and reopen it again. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, two... 17. So people claim this um, says dawn. Before the day breaks, and we can look at the inner linear in just a minute, and shadows flee. So what I see here with that statement, day breaks, sunrise, in my opinion, and shadows flee. So fleeing is moving. Shadows don't move until after sunrise there's there's no shadows before that and, and they don't move because it's dispersed light there it dispersed oh you can't see me so here let me do this um dispersed light is not going so this is the type of light that's coming from the direct sun after sunrise and this is why we get shadows dispersed light is just going all over the place because it's just bouncing. I mean, light, even direct light's doing this all the time, but nowhere to the degree before sunrise. It, but light before sunrise is just dispersed, and it's just, it's just going all over the place, and that's why you don't get the shadows. Because when there's a stick, there's light moving at it at both directions, and thus no shadow. Um, hopefully that is a good demonstration <laughs> anyways okay uh, turn my beloved and be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountain of Bazir. okay so the, the main part is right here at the beginning day brocks and shadows flee shadows don't don't start moving fleeing until there is a sunrise um, and the context daybreak without understanding the shadows issue it could be dawn whenever you think morning is and I think if look let's see what that actually looks like I don't have that one in the notes to breathe to blow cool hastens longs set of set of flame to me that's more like the Sun to me anyways snorts speaks tells utters and I could go either way on that um, but because of the shadows moving which 
to flee you have to move I would go with sunrise um, here's another one that's uh, popular is Genesis 19 if I can get this thing to move I I don't know what I'm doing wrong Okay. Um, we need to look at it. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. Oh, this is, um, yeah, Lot. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, uh, that the firstborn said on the young, Behold, I lay yesternight, that the the day before, with my father. And she's saying that in the morning. So, I mean, and so she laid with him at night. So this is a real good one to say that the day starts in the morning, whether if you think it's one of the dawns or at sunrise. With my father, let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lay with him, that we must preserve the seed of our father and they may their father drink wine that night also and the young one arose and lay with him and he perceived not that she lay down nor when she arose so that's not a real good one for um, sunrise or dawn as some people claim um, I don't think we need to go look at it but since we did that one on accident I'll do the judge 19 26 um, which is along the same type of subject line. <laughs> so, um, in the King James, which is what I grew up with, um, then came the woman in the dawning, and we'll look at that word in a minute, of the day, and fell down at the door of the man's house, where her Lord was, till it was light. Um, so, we go look at that dawning, um, to turn... So, approaches. So, um, personally, I would take this to mean um, it's starting to change until there was, like, light. Um, so, it's not really saying when the morning starts, um, in my opinion here. Um, Plus, the dawning there, depending on what you want to do, can be translated a couple different ways. Uh, but, um, as we saw in the video, civil dawn, which varies how soon before sunrise is, actually starts having some light uh, before the sunrise. Um, uh, they did stuff with her at night. So this is the verse before. And then in the morning... And so verse 27, I think, kind of helps uh, along the lines of the morning being at sunrise. Because here she was at the door while it was dawning, I think is a possible valid translation. But then the Lord rose up after she was there and opened the doors to the house and went out his way. So... Um, Anyways, so those are the verses that I've seen people try to say that the day starts at dawn. Um, where hopefully I have shown at least there's a possibility of these things not quite stating that, even if you don't completely agree with me. Does anybody have any questions on those? 
Uh, I can barely hear you. Uh, uh, let me, I'll just bow out. No, no, I, I, I'm turning up my volume. I can hear you better. I just hope there's not going to be feedback because I'm turning it up. Um, so try again. Okay. Uh, I was number one. I, I really do appreciate uh, your study and the way you study. Uh, very dear to my heart. <laughs> uh, and, and I love Bible Hub too for that for that reason. Uh, the others I piled, I just maybe there's a tool for change too, but Bible Hub really allows me to, uh, to go deeper in the language. But I, you're breaking out more. Uh, you said something about Bible Hub only lets you go so far or so deep, and then you. No, I Bible Hub. Hear. Bible Hub does allow you to go deeper. Than oh yes. Other, other yes. tools that I have found online with my go to as well. Um, uh, I've seen people use Blue Bible, if I remember correctly, in some videos of some people that I like to watch. Blue uh, Letter. And they do pretty well there, but I. For whatever reason, that interface doesn't jive with me. Maybe it's because I ran into Bible Hub first, and I started using it, and I started seeing people do Blue Bible later, and so I'm just okay. used to the Bible Hub way. <laughs> I'm being well, late. I, you know, I, I have found the same thing through. I appreciate it. Blue Letter, and I started with Blue Letter, Blue Bible Hub. Yeah, Brother Pete, you're really garbled again. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'll bow out so I can figure out what my problem. Thank you. We want to hear you, though. But yeah, I, I, I just maybe you get close to the mic and then you go away because sometimes I can hear you well, and then maybe you get thinking you're comfortable and you move your mic away. Maybe that's what's happening. Uh, this this may come in better. I'm going to use I'm using a the uh, microphone in the in the laptop. Maybe yeah, that's, that's helpful. Yeah. Much better. Okay. Um, I was saying that I find the same things to be true. I started with Blue Letter Bible, uh, Blue Letter Bible, and it, it, it's a nice program, and I really appreciate the people that did that. But uh, I find that uh, Bible Hub allows you to get more directly and deeper into the original languages and do the analysis, the type of analysis you are doing. To not even not even taking the concordances word or the lexicons word for what a word is, but go back to the passages themselves and look at how um, how the the authors use that word. You're doing you're you're basically reconstructing your own lexicon directly from the scripture. Correct. Yes, because uh, they have the examples on the right where in the scriptures how they've used it. Um, so you can go really deep if you want, and the better translators do this, um, where some translators are just more trying to push their theology than do uh, scholarship. Uh, but there's a place for both, because, I, I mean, to some people, we'll just say that with my belief of the sunrise, I'm just pushing my belief into the verses. Possibly. Um, but at least I can show I have justification for it, even if you don't agree with it. Amen, amen. And, and I'm I'm speaking in the much bigger sense. There's, you know, this this is a particular area, and um, a serious Bible student needs to do this kind of depth analysis for themselves and make up their make up their minds, um, or leave it open. Sometimes you'll do it and say, well, I really can't come up with an answer here. I mean, a definitive answer, and move on with what they have. But this this tool and the way you're approaching the Scripture is universal to to the, the entirety of understanding Scripture. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, and I, I haven't seen a Bible Hub show this, but uh, a lot of translators will also uh, throw in Mishnah and Talmud and other rabbinic sources. Not that... Um, they should be used for doctrine, in my opinion, but they do help us know how the words were used. Um, and I, I actually come across how an, a recent archaeological dig came up with, found uh, some transcripts, I think it was written in stone, to help translate a word that translators didn't know how to translate before on, on a measurement on something. I don't remember too many details. Um, but it... Words only mean things in context. Even English, 
yeah. um, depending on the context, will change the definition. And one that's, I think, important for those who believe in Torah is the word new. Even in the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, new can mean renew. And so when some people see that Christ said, I give this new commandment to love God and love your neighbor, they think it's brand spanking new. No, it's not. It's in Torah, multiple places, both of those portions. And this is an example in my mind where that would be better translated in today's language, renewed. Um, yeah, wow. Excellent. Excellent. And even one that's even closer to our hearts in this discussion is a new moon. It's not a new moon, literally a new moon. It's a renewed moon. But we yeah. still say new moon. Uh-huh. Uh, absolutely. Very good. Very good. Carry on. Wonderful. Okay. A anybody else? No? Okay. So uh, there's a, another thing that um, goes along with this. Um, so uh, maybe I'll just start with Aries. So let me get some notes up. Let me... I wasn't sure how long I was going to take. Hold on. Um, one note, when you're studying, save your notes. Um, so when people have questions, you can give them references. Um, just remember how to find them. <laughs> As you can see here, I'm scrolling through. I'm having a hard time finding the one that I want. Um, Oh, Aries, okay. Um, so, there's a lot of things to do with Aries. So, Aries comes into play for the beginning of the year. Um, and Josephus has a quote, how the year starts in Aries. Okay? Now, depending on exactly what you think that means, I agree. Now, let me get into this a little bit. Um, there's two Aries. And most people have no clue on this. And I only know this because I've dug into it. When uh, Another thing that I started looking into um, during the, that last year, last year, where there was the difference of when the year starts, um, I had a thought that possibly we need to use the stars to determine the start of the year. I no longer agree with that because of things that I've run into. Though I am glad I started studying the Maseroth because I've learned that the Maseroths, the, the constellations before the Hellenists, which is the, or the Greeks, which is the most popular right now, has perverted them. Um, and so first, we'll just... Um, just go off a little something that I put together just as a quick reference. Um, my Scrolling's not working. I guess that's the problem. So, Genesis 114 is dear to the hearts of all us Luber Sabbatarians, right? And Elohim said, let the lights, sun and the moon, and I can justify that going, going to verse 16 in a minute, in the ferment of the heavens to divide. So it is light that divides, not darkness. So, with... And when does light happen? It starts in the morning, not at the evening. In the evening is when dark starts. In fact, we could even talk about between the evenings, because there's multiple evenings in the scriptures. There's the afternoon, because that's when the sun starts going down, which is the evening. In fact, there's some people that do believe that the day starts in the afternoon uh, because of this fact. E another big evening is sunset. When Christ was crucified, it was about 3 o'clock, a.k.a. between the evenings when the daily performance and ordinance sacrifices were done on the dot. And between the evenings is between noon, when the sun starts starting, to, when it starts going down, to when it actually is completely down, sunset, between the evenings. Um, so anyways, ferment of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, which Moedim appointed times, and the Sabbath is an appointed time. 
and for days and for years. So, there's two lights that we're supposed to use to determine the appointed times, when the days are and when the years are. And we can look at verse 15 if you want, um, but I don't think it matters too much with this part here as I left it out. And God made two great lights. Ah, were the, the lights. The greater light to rule, dominate the day. And actually, I'm going to want to talk about that just a little bit since we're here. And the lesser light to rule, dominate the night. He made the stars also. So, he made the stars also. That is an afterthought. Meaning, um, the stars do not apply to what was just previous said. Uh, he's just kind of tagging it along as a side note. R the stars rule nothing. If they did, uh, how come they didn't, the verses above didn't mention what they rule. Uh, but they do teach the gospel, and I have a, a link for that that um, goes into a lot of details of that that I've gotten from other people um, that have put a lot of work into that. That's something I still want to study more. But some people uh, use the theory that the reason why, another reason why dawn is when the day starts is because that's when night and, and light are equal, and that the the moon doesn't really do much anymore because now it's ruling. But they don't use the same logic in the fact that we can go out almost every single day and see the moon during the daylight. So if you think rule or dominate means that nothing else is there, then you have a problem when the sun and the moon are out during high noon. Because that contradicts that. Um, but the main thing I'm going on with is the start of the year. The start of the year is based off the two great lights. And he made the stars also. Meaning, this I told you how to go figure things out. And I made the stars also as an afterthought. Um, so, I do not believe stars rule anything. They teach us as I have some things to do, including Job, um, that teach that and show that from the scriptures. In fact, a, a lot of what is in the scriptures, the Tanakh and the New Testament, was first written in the stars by Elohim um, to teach us. Because they, they do speak to us when you know how to listen to it. Just like um, words. If you don't know the language, you don't know how they're speaking to you. So it's after you learn to, how to read and understand that they actually start speaking and teaching you. Um, just, just as a babe, when they're born, they, they, they don't know how to, what we're saying to them, so we have to be a lot more patient with them. Um, so anyways, back to Aries. So there's a quote by Jophesus that the year started in Aries. And the one thing that we need to keep in mind is who he was writing to when he wrote that. Um, he, I, I think he was writing, writing to Roman officers, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm a little vague on that history, so if anybody um, can correct me on that, please do real quick in the, in the chat. Um, but one thing about Rome, they accepted pretty much how the Greeks did everything, a.k.a. the Hellenists. The, the Hellenists ideas have pretty much taken up over the whole world. Um, and the, the ways that the Hellenists think about things are, are quite different than the Semitics and Hebrews think about things. But the reason I bring this up, the Hellenists, the Greeks, um, somewhat copied their astronomy from the Babylonians who did it more the Semitic way. And where they... It, but they modified when Aries starts. Um, they changed it to start with the spring equinox all the time. And one thing that God had me look into to help learn that is actually astrology. Now, I don't use astrology, but I, the reason he had me go look into that 
astrology, when you actually start looking at this, there are apologists in astrology that talk about the difference between the tropical year, which is um, spring equinox to spring equinox, versus the side rail year. Um, and the side rail year means that the year is based on the same star being in the same position year to year. And the tropical year and the side rear, side rear, rear are different from each other by 22 minutes and 24.5 seconds or something to that effect. I don't remember the exact number, but it's basically 20 and a half minutes. In one year, you won't really notice that. But over thousands of years, you do notice it. Um, and I... I'm almost out of time, so I can't really um, show a whole bunch, but I'm not a big fan of uh, Bill Nye, but I'm just going to show this one so I don't go over time. Um, and he pretty much nails the quick concept in like about a minute, which is about how much I have left. So um, hopefully you guys can hear the I'm video. Sure to the top town network. I am a full stack UI UX product designer. Uh, I'll put the link in the chat just in case. Oh. What makes you say that? Because I can see the stars. You probably know your son. Or do you? Try this. Wait for your birthday, then stay up all night. And watch where the sun rises. It will pass in front of one of the 12 constellations of the zodiac. You say, I am a Sagittarius. So on my birthday, you might expect the sun to rise in the constellation Sagittarius. And it did, 2,000 years ago, when the Babylonians made all this up. But it doesn't now. In the last 2,000 years, the Earth has wobbled like the top. So now on my birthday, the sun rises in Scorpio, not Sagittarius. So maybe you'd have to be a Capricorn to be a Sagittarius. And Scorpios would have to be Libras. The astrologers are off one full sign. In 2,000 more years, they'll be off two signs. But they don't seem to care. So, in these reflective moments, I ask myself, am I a fun-loving Sagittarius or a sexy Scorpio? Um, did, did you guys hear that? Well, if not, there's the link. Um, yeah. he, yes, he, we were able to hear it. Okay, he's basically kind of making fun of it because of these differences. Um, but the Hellenistic, the Greeks, although they started with the Babylon dead, was they were doing the side reel one, and it's a little more than just the tilt of the earth um, going, but um, they kept Aries at zero, and that's who Philo was writing to when he said our year starts in Aries. Um, so here's a quote that we can just look real quick with the last little minute that we have left. Uh, from a book while I was studying um, sundials, which I believe has to do with how to determine the day and the year. We have mentioned previously the processions of the equinoxes, a phenomenon first noted by Hippocrates, and the effect of which since his lifetime has been gradually to shift the constellations. In fact, it moves one degree in about 72 years, if I remember correctly, in the sky, away from the signs which they now carry their names. And that's how the Hellenistics do things who Josephus was writing to. Um, I should probably end with that, and if you guys want, I can do some more on the uh, tropical year versus the side real year another time. Okay, I'm going to close the recording, and then we'll stand by for discussion. Thank you, Brother Steve.